Thank you all. Hi, my name's Ryan Single. Uh, I'm the founder of Contextly, uh, and we're a company that helps publishers make more money by keeping their readers around. Uh, before I founded Contextly, uh, I was a writer and editor for Wired for a decade. Um, but this presentation isn't um, all about my company. Uh, we're just going to talk about the problem of living in the age of drive-by readers. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Um, well, social distribution channels are fantastic, right? So these days, when you want to find readers, they don't have to come to your homepage. They can find you through Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, all sorts of great places. Um, but there's a problem with that. And the problem is one and done. People read your story, and they go back to Facebook. Um, so that leads to this problem, uh, which is that the bounce rates are too damn high. Um, and that means the bounce rate is essentially <laughs> The percentage of your readers that read one page divided by all the people that read your, uh, your content. And these days, a lot of publishers are seeing bounce rates up in the 85% range. And that means 85% of your readers are reading one page. Uh, and that's no way to like, build a long-term readership um, if you're a publisher or if you're uh, a company blog, um, because then you're stuck again trying to get something onto Twitter and to Facebook, and you're constantly feeding those beasts instead of getting people to actually come back to your site. So that's the question. How do you turn a drive-by visitor into a loyal reader? And it's a tough problem. Uh, and part of that problem is that um, this is a, a, a heat map of what readers look at when they look at a, a, a news story. And you can see readers um, are very good at ignoring all the stuff on the side and all the stuff at the top. Um, they're very good at reading the stream. Um, so that means the stream is actually the thing that you kind of have to focus on. Um, so you can stick all you want uh, into the sidebars, but largely um, that's not where people are going to look. Um, so it comes to the idea that every post is your new home page. So what you need to be doing is thinking about how can you write content that's good enough to get somebody through the body of your stream and down to the bottom of your story, where you actually can have a home page. You can engage people. In, in, and you think about home pages of sort of what they are. And home pages are places that people go uh, when they want to be entertained and when they want to learn something. Right? They have some attention that they want to be filled. So what you need to do here is get people to, again to that moment of sort of inattention. They can get them to the bottom of a story and they're like, what do I do now? Do I comment? Do I go back to Facebook? Give them something to do. Um, so you, you might think that's not true, um, but uh, it is actually true. Um, <laughs> every post is your new home page. Um, so the question of what to do when somebody gets down to the bottom of that home page, uh, is, at the bottom of your story, uh, it seems easy enough. There's lots of free plugins. There's um, all sorts of services you can use. Um, but there's actually some, you know, uh, I spend way too much time thinking about this. Um, there's lots of sort of debates about what you should do there. Um, and so here's one of the great debates. Um, we've got, uh, uh, who's this on the left? Anybody? My, my, Ron Papil, very great. You guys remember, set it, forget it, with the great chicken roaster. Uh, and then um, this guy on the right, um, who's that? Anybody remember? What's that? Yeah, 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 there we go. Um, so question here, do you want to just have a little thing that you have no control over, you just set it, forget it, and you have a nice little thing that does something for you automatically? Or do you want to be kind of a chef and actually have some editorial control? Um, there's another great debate uh, here, um, and we'll just set up Tesla versus Edison, uh, which is the idea of related uh, versus clicky. Um, so at the bottom of your section, when somebody gets to the bottom of your story, do you want to show them things that are very related to your current topic? That seems to be uh, sensible. Um, you know, uh, the reader gets to the bottom. Or do you want to show them things that are sort of clicky, that like, are popular on your site? Um, that actually makes sense as well. Um, and I used to be very much in the related uh, section. That was. I, I had the idea that um, readers really want to always dive deep and have this sort of Wikipedia moment when they read a story. And we can show them all the great stuff. Um, turns out there's a really good argument for clicky, um, that people are not always in that mood to dive very deep. Um, they sometimes they finish a story about, I don't know, say Apple suing Google over trademark. At that point, they might want to read a story about Game of Thrones. You have no idea, right? People want to read stuff. People want to be entertained. Um, they don't always want to learn something. Um, so, and then there's this final debate, too, um, which is, uh, well, this one is a little bit loaded, um, so you can see which side I'm on. Uh, there is the build readership um, idea, or there is the um, arbitrage traffic. Uh, and by that, I mean, you, know, you all have seen, there's quite a number of um, related link modules that show up at the bottom of stories, uh, where half or all of those are links to other people's sites that you get paid a couple of pennies um, for doing, for including those links. 
So you sometimes you'll see um, the biggest ones you've seen are Outbrain and Taboola. Um, and so there's a kind of a question of, you know, for your site and for your goals, what do you want? Do you try to get people to stick around your site? You're trying to build loyal readership? Um, or are you kind of a publisher that's really worried about making some money? Um, and as I put it, you want to make quick money with paid links to external sites you can't control. Um, giving them Nixon, I, I'm not a fan of this model. but. Um, so, um, before I, I have, I can give you a whole list of sort of automated tools, but I wanted to just quickly um, jump out for a second and look at some, uh, some different websites uh, that I think are doing things well and some that aren't. So, I'll see if I can jump out. Get my email. All right. Um, so, I'm going to be a, a little bit mean here. Um, so I'm actually going to um, make fun of um, people that I like. So um, this is Women 2.0, uh, who are great, fantastic folks that work just around the corner. Um, unfortunately, their, um, their web page is, is, is sort of bad. So they have really tiny type. Uh, and then there's all this stuff on the right-hand side, including those like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, get LinkedIn, all sort of in a crazy little thing. Um, and then you get to the bottom of the page, and they tell you something about the writer, which is nice for the writer, but not really good for the reader. Uh, and then you get to the comment section, and then we have some tags, and then finally at the bottom we get to some related articles. Um, you really don't want to do that. That moment of inattention stops when they get to that final paragraph. Um, if you want to give a writer a bio, put it up at the top. If you have tags, you don't need to put them at the bottom of the story. Nobody likes tag pages. Um, they're, kind of, they're useful for some SEO and some other stuff. Um, but really, you want to, when somebody gets to the bottom of your story, hit them with here's more stuff to read, or at least some sort of call to action. So I'm going to jump. Um, so this is the Washington Post. Um, it's a fairly nice layout um, with an, like, kind of a little bit text heavy on the right. Um, and then it starts off nicely, and then they start to do this sidebar. And all of a sudden, um, you're forcing your reader through a, a little thin funnel. Um, and it's kind of hard to read, and you get sort of annoyed. And you're not going to look at the sidebars, because they're too big. Um, and then it keeps going down. There's still way too much stuff on the side. It's all too busy. Um, and then get down to the bottom, again, comments first. Uh, and then if you go all the way down at the bottom of the comments, uh, then you've got some related stuff. Don't do that. People know where the comments are. People always know the comments are at the very bottom. Um, they're not the thing. If people really want to read the comments, they'll get to them. Show them your related stuff before your comments. Um, this is a WordPress um, help site. Um, this is talking about um, one of the tools that uh, is very common, which is known as YARP, uh, yet, another yet another related post plugin, uh, which, is, which is very good. Um, and this is actually a fairly nice uh, little site, except for those um, the little tags on the right, the tag clouds. Don't do tag clouds. Nobody likes tag clouds. Uh, they're like five years old, um, and they're not good. Um, and then they just do a very simple thing. But when you get to the bottom of the post here, um, it's pretty clean, and they just do uh, a set of text. Um, and text actually works better than you think it does, straight text. Um, images are nice, and it looks really pretty. Um, but straight text is very readable. Um, and this is nice. They limit it to about five. Um, don't do more than that. So here's Politico. Um, and these are just ones I grabbed randomly. Um, and this is pretty nice from Politico. Um, but Politico uses uh, Taboola. So this is a story about Green, Glenn Greenwald and uh, being smeared in the press. and. Uh, and then we have uh, their related links are from Taboola, um, which has uh, something about uh, some guy um, exercising. Um, all of these are paid links off of their site. Um, and the one thing to watch for these, if you do do paid links on your site, um, these are actually illegal um, because they're not marked. As and, and I don't want to be mean to Laughing Squid because Laughing Squid is great. Um, here's a very simple. Clean little layout, um, but again, when you get it down to the bottom, it tells you something about the writer. Um, the share buttons are fine, uh, and then, and then they do an ad right there, which is perfectly fine. Lots of people are going to see that, and it's an interactive ad, so that's good. Um, but then at the very bottom, there's a forward and backward kind of as if they hadn't really thought about it um, sort of way. Um, not a good solution. And these guys have a cool little site, Live Your Legend. Um, and they do really nice things about trying to get you to, uh, on the right, about uh, getting email addresses. I highly recommend if you're uh, publishers of any sort, try and get people's email addresses and do it in a, a very nice way. Um, 
but very blatant because people still use email all the time. Um, but these guys, when you get down to the bottom of the story, uh, again, sort of, it's a very long story. Um, and you've got 65 awesome comments and previous post, next post. Uh, you, you're not giving me anything to do when I get down to the bottom. If I'm not interested in joining in that conversation, show me something else I can do. Um, and here's Think Progress. Um, this one is the one that kills me. So anybody know Think Progress? Uh, they're kind of a liberal, left-leaning group. Um, and they use um, Taboola. And when you get down to the bottom, uh, still not great. Um, you've got sort of the Facebook comments. And then, oh, are they down there? I seem to miss them. Um, I'm not online, so maybe that's why this isn't loading. Um, we'll skip these. Um, but anyways, they use uh, Taboola, and they show ads for a far right-wing website. Um, and this is Search Engine Land, which is a great blog uh, about searches. And this is fairly clean, um, and I just was doing this to show off um, this one, um, so these are related argu um, articles. Um, they do this a lot. They're really great about linking and choosing things, but this big block of like 10 related links, I see that and I just want to run away. I have no idea where to start. Which one of those do I choose? Um, make it simple. Um, and this is using um, a free WordPress plugin um, called MicroKids, which is now I think related posts for WordPress. Um, but this is a fine, a fine choice. Um, Oh, and um, this is my favorite um, Mexican client. Um, so they're using Contextly, and they have a fairly clean little layout. Um, that little sidebar is something created by us. Uh, and then a set of, um, what you'll see here, we do a set of related stories, and then we do a set of stories that are unrelated, um, trying to get you to jump around. And, and then another Snowden story. I'm a little obsessed with Snowden. OK, great. Um, and we get down the bottom, uh, same thing, a uh, set of related stories, and then we do a set, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's a tab of recommended for you, which is actually it's just sort of other interesting stuff. And I'll jump to one last one. Um, a warning, Forbes uses this thing called um, content ad, um, to the bottom of their stories. Uh, whatever, whatever else you do, do not use these guys. Um, so they fill out, um, they give you these sort of like scam ads, like how you can buy an iPad for under forty dollars. You know, if there's a way to buy an iPad under forty dollars, <coughs> uh, that's not a scam. Um, yeah, you you don't want that on your site. So, um, we'll jump back. The keynote. So um, automated tools, here are some that are uh, good to try out. Um, Inrelate um, um, is owned by ask.com. They do some, they'll do stuff that is just for your site, and then if you want to, you can run ads as well. Uh, Link Within, um, Outbrain, um, and, uh, and they are also sort of the same sort of model, um, third-party services. Uh, yeah, Yarp uh, is automated, but it, it is just a WordPress plugin. It's free to use. Um, and then uh, Contextly, we're automated on, on on half of what we do, and then WordNick is another free plug plugin. And then on the editorial sort of side, where you actually have you choose and have a human actually say this thing is related to that thing, um, you can use MicroKids, which is related posts for WordPress, um, and they have a fairly like cool little interface at the bottom of your post that lets you search for related uh, posts and add them. Um, both, uh, and then contextually we do the same thing. If you, we make it easy for humans to actually choose uh, something that's uh, related. Um, and we're sort of semi-automated with related. Um, <clears throat> the one nice thing that, um, that MicroKids does and that we do is they do reverse links. So if you link your current story to an older story, that older story will get a link to your new story. So um, that way people that come into search and come into an old story have a very easy way to find your new stuff. Um, and, and then Zamanta does some editorial kind of stuff. Um. Um, and then native WordPress tools, the two big ones, um, there's a number of them, but these are the, the two most popular, Yarp and uh, MicroKids. Uh, the nice thing about that is you're not relying on an outside service. Um, you get some SEO benefit because generally they're put into your page as the page is made. Um, and there's no third-party JavaScript or cookies, so you don't have any privacy concerns. Um, but uh, they can be database intensive, especially if you get a lot of traffic and, um, and you're hosting your own. If you go for uh, showing images, uh, you have to deal with the images yourself and that can be a little tricky and bandwidth intensive. Um, and then um, 
So then the SaaS services um, like Outbrain, Inreli, uh, Wordnik, uh, Link Within, Contextly, uh, you get algorithms that are that are done by you know people whose job it is to, to do this, and they're constantly evolving. Um, so you get that benefit. Um, you get no load on your database, um, so your pages are going to load generally load faster, even though you're loading third-party content. Um, you get reduced bandwidth, and uh, with some of them, you can get a revenue share. So if you want to run ads. Um, and um, here's a bunch of the things I'm not promoting about my company, uh, which we do this awesome way of adding links to the bottom of your story. You can add sidebars to the bottom of your posts. We do house ads, A-B tests on the design, and great analytics. Um, but I'm not promoting this. So anyways, rules for your new homepage. Um, respect the stream. Think about like what your readers want to see. W worry about that middle body of the story. Um, Think like your reader. Um, don't think about all the widgets you can shove into the page. Think about if you were a reader, what would you want to see? Um, your email lists are powerful. And define your goals. So choose your tools based on what you're after. So if you're mint.com, you should not be sending people off of the site to go to dishwasherinfo.com to make three cents. That's not your business model, right? Your business model is to get people to use Mint and use Intuit services. Um, and um, we didn't see any of these, but um, uh, I, there are two things I really dislike, which is the flyout, which is, I know people know the flyout, so you get to the bottom of the story, and then all of a sudden this little thing flies out in the right corner, um, which was really cute and fun and interesting the first time, but you really don't want your readers in the middle of a story to, you don't want to sort of uh, trigger the flight, uh, sort of fight or flight response, which is what happens when something shows up in your periphery and flies out. Um, so respect the stream. Allow your readers to read the story. Um, and um, so finally, don't be fun size. Um, don't let readers come and read one of your stories and leave. Um, you want to be a buffet. Uh, and that's it. If you have any questions, uh, you can find me afterwards. Thank you, guys.